Well, hello, this is Bob Buckley again at True32 Corporation. I'm getting ready to do another video on KCD. Uh, this is one of several videos that we'll be talking about the version 9.01 and 9.02 library of, of KCD or True32 library for KCD. Um, we're going to start with in this video talking about the startup standards and within these startup standards quite a few have been added from the, the uh, original startup standards that would have come with or shipped with KCD version 8 or 9 um, True32 Corporation has been adding uh, additional standards throughout the years but when version 9 came along I added quite a few so I want to kind of go down through this list uh, and devote this one video just to this one area and talk about what's been added this and, and, and then some of the implications over in these um, additional groups that have been added. Um, but these additional startup standards are a way to kind of jump start a job and answer some questions about how you want things to behave before you ever start and make your designs much quicker. Um, so the more of these that we can, can add that are applicable to drawing jobs, the better off we all are. Um, and I actually had to have KCD add uh, additional uh, links to this list so that I could continue to add items to it. So let's jump right in. Um, the first two, uh, number one, the first thing to notice is that this list has been rearranged from either KCD's uh, order or even the True32 order of version 8. Um, and what I've tried to do is order these where the most frequently um, edited or changed items are as close to the top of this list uh, as you can see if I scroll through this list it's quite long um, and it takes quite a long time to scroll through all of this and check all of these so um, the things that are least likely to be changed are as close to the bottom as possible and the things that are most likely to be changed are, are at the top um, so let's, let's uh, look at some of these that have been added this item number three is a new item flat freeze height and then item number four, flat freeze depth. And these are uh, for a specific design feature where you like the idea of bringing your um, applied ends out flush to the front of the doors and drawers, bringing the face of those applied ends out, uh, making that project projection 20 to 22 millimeters. Uh, this flat freeze allows you to um, use traditional uh, True32 vintage crown molding uh, because it won't reach that far. The, uh, the base on that crown molding is not long enough to allow you to attach it to the top of the cabinet and reach out 20 millimeters, 22 millimeters past the, the front of the cabinet. So this flat freeze gives you, you know, comes out flush to those fronts on top of the cabinets and allows you something to screw your top mount crown to. So that was the intention. It also gives somewhat of a, an inset look to the cabinetry having this flat uh, 19 millimeters, the thickness of this material, the front face is showing and it gives you a, a, a flat area there that the crown mold sits on top of. So this flat freeze height is the thickness of the material you'll be using. This flat freeze depth is how wide you want this piece to be and typically we do want it to be a, a, a large enough depth for the um, CNC guys for it to be safe to machine without uh, getting loose or getting knocked off by the router, you know, to have enough vacuum to hold it. So 108 is a good safe number. If you're a manual shop, you can certainly set this to 52 millimeters or 64 millimeters, something small. Um, of course, keeping in mind that you need to be able to edge band this, so don't make it so small you can't run it through your edge bander, just whatever your minimum size for an edge bander is. Um, this light rail has been here for a while, but you'll also notice that most of these now have a prompt. Um, so we had a few of these down through there, but almost every field now has a prompt of, this is what True32 would typically put in this field. And this particular project that I have opened here, it is not using flat freeze, so I don't have those traditional or prompted answers in here. Um, and you see this one is completely different, but that's because this is a project that is going to the ceiling. Um, and this could be anything, depending on the size of the crown and, and the size of your freeze mold. Uh, so. Um, light rail has been here, but you now see that we typically would use one of these three sizes, the 32 millimeters specific to jobs where we want the doors to hang down and cover that um, 
light rail, and that's the largest size you can use. You need to move in increments of 32 so that you can stay on system. And anything past that, the hinge plate would not still be inside of the cabinet unless you board something off system when we like for those doors to be bored equal distance from each end. 60 being the size of the crown or the light rail that comes um, in the Parma set of materials, um, which is a decorative alignment of a near suite that Conestoga offers, and then 70 being the True 32 vintage light rail. Um, but it can be anything you want. And what this field actually controls is your applied ends. Um, when you add 70, enter 70 millimeters in here, it'll actually add 70 millimeters to the height of your applied ends. This top flat freeze will add whatever you enter here also to the height and change the position. So if the top of your cabinets, wall cabinets, are at 2414 and you have 19 millimeters added here, it'll actually move the position of the applied ends up 19 millimeters, add 19 millimeters to the height so that the supplied end will, will be in the appropriate position to receive this flat freeze on top of your cabinets. Um, the applied end projection has been here all along, but again we have a couple prompts. Standard filler width, is, width has always been here. Countertop thickness has always been here. Uh, countertop overhang has always been here. This door edge banding thickness is actually controlled somewhere else, uh, so we don't really want to use this field for that. Um, we're controlling that uh, in another area. Uh, socket setback is somewhat new, not in version 9, it was in version 8, but it's only been around a few years. And here we've given you the typical sizes 108, 42, and 24. 108 being a traditional, uh, that's from the front of the cabinet to the center of the socket hole, so that gives you about a 70 millimeter uh, step back from the front of the cabinet to the front of the toe kick. 42 millimeters from the front of the cabinet to the center of the socket hole actually flushes the front of the toe kick to the front of the cabinet and you could add an additional base molding to that. 24 puts the back of the toe kick flush to the front of the cabinet um, and again you could also add a base mold to that. The advantage of using this one is if you're using this um, flat freeze and all your applied ends are in this projection, applied in projection is set at 20 millimeters, then this 24 will flush the front of the toe kick with the flush uh, front of these applied ends um, and then you can wrap a base uh, mold around that. Uh, so anytime you're doing a decorative base detail like I'm doing on this cabinet here, I'm not sure how clear that is, it's pretty small, but I'm doing a decorative base on this cabinet here. So I've got applied ends that are coming flush to the front of the door, running all the way to the floor. We'll take a typical piece of baseboard and cut this shape out of it. Uh, let me turn some of these. Oh, I can't do that with uh, this open, but um, we're going to cut a nice little shape out of that and, and it'll actually nail to the applied ends uh, with the 23 gauge pin nails. Uh, and then kick height has been here all along. Toe notch depth has been, uh, eh, it's somewhat new, but it's, it's not being used right this minute or it's not. It actually works and functions, but this is ultimately going to be uh, legacied out and we'll use another methodology for this. Right now this 84 millimeters actually is, even though I have a note there, it says not used. It is being used and we'll cut uh, a notch in the applied ends that are run to the floor that a toe height is set on um, on the CNC router. Um, wall height has always been there, floor to top of uppers has always been there, top cabinet height has always been there, top cabinet depth has always been there. This is a new field, top cabinet shelf spacing. Um, basically you enter whatever you would like to, to have the math calculated on for the shelf spacing. So um, you know if you want four shelves in your upper cabinets you would you know make this number smaller. If you want three shelves this is the appropriate uh, number. If you want two shelves in a thousand twenty four millimeter tall cabinet you would want to uh, make this number larger um, and then that would allow you to have two shelves. You just have to kind of find out where those numbers are though to do the math. Um, top blind in width is, is, has always been here. Uh, top return filler is new. Um, in the return blind end instance, this actually uh, sets a, a default width of the filler, and this happens to be for a top cabinet. Um, so it would set a, a filler at 19 millimeters uh, wide, uh, and all of its height and dimensions and all that will be correct. And we actually have those items added to these groups now. So when you do a a blind cabinet, you also have a return filler that's appropriately positioned based off of this startup standard. This is These are all three new top alternate cabinet height, top alternate cabinet depth, and top alternate blind in width. These three fields control 
this uh, new group here called Top Cabinet Special. Uh, and, and our, I'm sorry, the Top Cabinets Alternate. Uh, everything within this group is pulled from these startup standards that have alt in them. It's just an alternate group. Um, so if you're going to do staggered cabinets or stacked cabinets, either one, you would enter the information about those cabinets here. Uh, so if you were going to do stacked cabinets, you would enter the lower unit information here, and you would enter the upper unit, the shorter cabinet here, any information about it. If you're going to do staggered cabinets, you would enter your tradition, your typical height, the lower height cabinets here into the top cabinet group, and then you're bumped up and bumped out. And you can see that's what this is set to now. So our traditional cabinets. Now this this happens to be a stacked group, so we have them. Uh, and, I'm, and then I'm not stacking. I'm actually just using the alternate group for a different depth. Um, but if you're actually stacking the, these cabinets, actually have a fixed shelf and this is one cabinet. But if I were stacking, I might have a cabinet number 20 and 21. 21 would be controlled by the top cabinet group, and 22, if, if we had that, or 20, would be controlled by the alternate cabinet group. And in this staggered type situation, this would control the taller, deeper units. This would control the shallower, standard height depth units. And in this base group, this was uh, always here, always here. Uh, again, shelf spacing is new in every group, and there is one for each group, so that uh, you get the appropriate amount of shelves depending on how big the space within the cabinet is. Line uh, in width was always here. Again, we've added this return filler for the base cabinet. Again, if, you're, if you prefer yours to be 68 or 102 or whatever, you enter that. You, know, you would at that point ignore this prompt, but you would enter whatever you would like to have there. Tall cabinet height has always been here, but again, more. Uh, prompts just kind of give you an idea of what the potential settings could be and obviously it's not a space here to add all the potential settings. Uh, tall lower pantry height, I'm not certain if this is new or not, I think it is, uh, but I know the one below it is. This may have been around, but this is for True32 and I think we've had it for a good while, but I don't think it was uh, original with KCD. Because we stack pantries and oven cabinets, we have a lower tall unit and then an upper cabinet stacked on top of it. So this is your typical height for the lower portion of a pantry, and this is the typical height of your lower portion of an oven. This is this, just the default setting. You could still change any of these to anything you want as you add the cabinets to the design, but this is to expedite the process if you have a default size. Uh, this is a standard that has always been here. Again, a new standard for tall cabinet spacing. Vanity cabinet height is not new, vanity cabinet depth is not new, shelf spacing is new, blind in width is probably new. I think we had a, a blind in width for base, but I don't think KCD provided one specifically for vanities, and I added that, and I obviously added this return filler for the vanity group. This whole linen grouping here is all new, and there's also a group here of linen cabinets. So uh, before you basically just had you know, tall cabinets, wall cabinets, and base cabinets. And so whatever you had your kitchen height tall cabinet set to is what your vanity linen type tall cabinets were set to. This distinguishes one from the other. So as long as you pull the cabinets from the linen group, it's going to work off of this maybe lower height possibly or even higher height and, and different depth. Um, so again, just expedites the design process of having these separate. So you've got a a linen upper cabinet height, a linen lower cabinet height, and this is similar to the pantry where you're stacking cabinets. Um, and we've given you some prompts of what they should be. And usually when there's multiples like this and they're related, this uh, height would go with this height, this height would go with this height, and this height would go with that height. Um, they're, they coincide with each other. Um, then we have a linen cabinet depth and shelf spacing. Uh, this top pantry opening height, because we don't use a single pantry, um, is not being used, although the, 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 the uh, standard still exists and would be used if you pull something from the frameless library that is not being used by anything in the True32 library. Uh, wall oven height is now being used. It's been ignored for a good while, but I'm now using it again. I'm going to also add new um, appliance standards here. Uh, ultimately, I'd like for you to be able to answer every question about every single appliance before you ever start designing the job. Um, but this 717 represents, uh, and I opened a job that happens to have one that's, that was set to 762, 
uh, for a specific appliance. But this 717 represents the tallest typical single wall oven that I was able to find looking through most of the uh, most popular brands of GE, De Decor, um, Thermador, uh, KitchenAid, Genair, you know, m most of the major brands um, basically set, went through their websites and looked at all their single ovens and this was the uh, closest to a common height or actually the tallest height of all of them. So we'd have a starting point but you would actually enter your wall oven height here uh, before you started designing and then you wouldn't have to enter it into the dialog box and potentially I'm um, going to maybe be able to usurp some of these that we no longer use. This will never be used by True32 with distance off floor to bottom of wall oven. Um, it's not a useful feature to us and we'll talk about that in another video why we will, would never use that um, but hopefully I can usurp this and make this maybe a microwave opening height and, and have that answer and maybe even at some point in time we also will not be using this because we have a top rail above the ovens um, so we would maybe be able to usurp this for an, uh, even an oven width possibly. Um, the rest of these, uh, most of these, the rest of these were still here. Dishwasher width has always been here. Stove width has always been here. Refrigerator width has always been here. There was not a refrigerator opening height. Um, so this is new and I'm giving you a couple prompts here. Um, but several of the cabinets are going to be based off of this standard when you start dropping refrigerators. Built-in refrigerator opening height is new, um, but it creates a couple parts and also allows us to have some additional units within these groupings over here so we can control those and I'll show those to you when we start looking at the groups. Uh, trash compactor ice macker. One of the other was here, one was not, and, and I've added this the second one. Probably trash compactor was, ice maker was not, and I added them. There's basically the same thing, but it is nice to be able to distinguish between them and then them actually show on the drawing that one is uh, the correct unit. So clients are commenting and hey, this thing says I have a trash compactor, but I told you I wanted an ice maker. Um, they're very similar, but they, they you know, to be able to distinguish them properly is nice. Um, all these side thicknesses of all in tops and bottoms and all these thicknesses have always been here. Uh, and here we have our uh, prompts of depending on what material you use, but typically, you know, if you're using a pre-finished or a plywood interior, you're going to be setting all these to 18 if you're going to be using a, uh, any type of melamine or uh, some particle cord material for your interiors, it's going to be set to 19. Um, but all of these have always been here. Um, all of these rail thicknesses and parts are, have always been here. Um, scrolling down looking for new items that I have. Changed the name of this item a little bit or added a little disclaimer here um, or additional information, you're not a disclaimer, but additional information here of we're now using this top cabinet top reveal to control our freeze. So at the very top here you noticed we had an item called flat freeze and flat freeze is when we're taking that freeze and, and laying it down flat and showing the front edge. Vertical freeze is controlled with this group um, of where we have this uh, top reveal uh, it actually controls the height of it. So if you weren't going to use a vertical freeze you would set it to 3. If you are using a vertical freeze you could set it to 67 or 99. Any increment of 32 off of these numbers. Uh, but, but typically 99 is enough to uh, in this particular case this is a 10 foot wall height and that's plenty for a 5 and a quarter inch crown to still have something to hit on depending on how far off the ceiling you hold the cabinet. So typically one of these three settings will do the job uh, but you could potentially go up another 32 millimeters if you needed to or even possibly down 32 from 67. Um, but we're controlling the, the freeze height with this field in addition to just a reveal when you're not using freeze, vertical freeze. And again we will cover how this vertical freeze and how flat freeze works in future videos. Most of these reveal items are not new. All of these style and rail sizes are not new. Um, let's see. Starting down here, we sh should see a few new um, items. Top panel base. These file cabinet um, units have been here for a number of years for the True32 guys. They really didn't have any sort of explanation. And again, I don't have enough room to get real clear about this. Um, but once I explained the the uh, terminology here, most people get it that this Z388 is the Zargon drawer with a traditional three piece railing set. Um, so you would want to set this cabinet width at 388 if you're using that 
traditional three-piece Zargon railing system. If you decided to use the Zargon Z-Rail, which is a one-piece rail system for your file cabinets, you would want to set this to 373. If you were building a Nova Pro drawer with their railing system, you would want to set this to 414. And if you were building a dovetail drawer using the Hayfla hanging file folder system, you'd want to set this to 388. And then this is the same thing for legal, this top line being letter and the bottom line being legal. Uh, desk lower bookcase height is new and that allows you to distinguish this from vanity or base cabinet so that you could have a third base cabinet height so anything you pull from this desk bookcase group is going to have the base cabinets pulled from this height as opposed from the vanity height. They may be one and the same but it does give you the ability to have maybe your vanity set to 782 and these desks set to 750 um, or you know any variation of that you, you have the ability to control that from here so the vanity is going to be height is going to be controlled from one base cabinets are going to be controlled from another and the desk and bookcase unit is going to be controlled from another these bookcase style widths um, have been here for a little while um, but they've actually been integrated into uh, several other things now so um, but you can set the bookcase style width to whatever you want and then the mid style width and then the top rail um, width uh, and actually just in, in, if you happen to have a bottom rail it would pull from that too. Um, wall thickness has always been here. These window and door things have always been here. The next one I plan on adding would go right here below the default window width or, or actually bef below these two I probably am going to add one um, for version 10 that is default trim width. Um, so that if you're using a uh, you know entering a, a four and a quarter inch trim or 102 or 110 millimeter or 106 millimeter 90 millimeter trim you're not having to do that as you drop each door and window if there's something other than what's hard coded in there now um, which I believe is 90 millimeters in the 232 library or 60 millimeters in the KCD library um, we'll be able to pull from a startup standard and the trim width will be uh, the appropriate size uh, so and then in addition to that again I plan on up here in this appliance are in these appliance units here. Um, hopefully, uh, in, sometime in the future, we'll actually have like a commercial cooktop height, um, an apron sink height, um, the microwave standard microwave height. Um, you know, basically, you'd be able to answer all the questions about appliances here in this these startup standards before you ever start the job, um, so that you do that much less manipulation manipulation within the cabinet dialog boxes. So that's all the new startup standards that covers all of those and those are related to some of these new groups. Um, so we have a new tall, so if you look at the top cabinet group here, um, and I have tried to get these, this one got really close or at least in, if I had this full screen it would be, but you see here we're not having to scroll, we're seeing all the items in this list and that was my objective but I have this screen kind of shrunk down to fit this video so there's actually plenty of room when this is full screen uh, none of these groups scroll past where you have to scroll to look at a cabinet within the group if you look at that group basically we've got uh, quite a few cabinets in there but when we come to this top ultimate cabinet group it's most of the cabinets the ones that would be applicable to a deeper taller scenario or a stack scenario um, and those are pulling from that different group um, within the top cabinet special, some of the cabinets that used to be in the top cabinets have been moved into here, and these are cabinets that you use less often, um, but we've also added several here recently. Um, let's see, we've got here, we've got the mitered front. The mitered front was only in the base, and it wasn't completed, but it is now completed, so we now have a top mitered front right and a top mitered front left. Um, in future videos, I'll probably go over how you place some of these newer units. Um, there is a specific order. In this case, this tells you that this unit, the right unit, needs to be placed first, and then the left unit second for this thing to work. Uh, and for the CNC guys, all the templates have been completed, so this cabinet actually works like the base cabinet now. Um, and then any things that were, any of the little errors that were in the base cabinet have been corrected. Um, also within the top cabinet group, we've added um, the pie cut cabinet was not here before. We didn't have a top, we had a base pie cut cabinet, but we didn't have a, a top pie cut cabinet. And then we also added a, a 45 door over door. It's actually a different unit. There was one in there, but it was a tall cabinet that kind of converted and it had some weird naming conventions and things like that. So 
this unit now uh, is actually a wall cabinet, so uh, there's no strange part names and things like that. Um, let's see if there's anything else added to this group. I don't see anything right off, so I'm going to skip on down here. Um, the island the peninsula backs for top and base cabinets have been moved into their own little groups. Um, just to make it you know easier to not have to sort through the cabinet parts to find there's not but a couple items in each of these two groups um, but all of these backs whether they be um, beaded or panelized or wainscot you know frame door they're all here together and a little easier to find within our base cabinet groups now separated before you had standards that allowed you to do a pie cut two piece versus a pie cut one piece um, but you could only use one or the other in any single job um, and now you can actually use two. So you, if you had a, uh, a U-shaped kitchen, you could actually use a two-piece in one corner and a one-piece in the other. Um, this one-piece corner pie cut unit now has the uh, clip like a diagonal cabinet. This, this cabinet is identical to a diagonal corner cabinet, except that it has a pie cut out of it instead of a diagonal clip across it. It has a, a diagonal corner support at the back so that it, you know if your corner is not perfectly square, you're not jammed up in it. The two-piece unit's also been adjusted where um, the second half cabinet, there's a full cabinet and a half cabinet, and the half cabinet is not really half a cabinet, it's really a, a seven-eighths of a cabinet. It's a cabinet without a, a right or a left end panel. Um, but now this cabinet, all the depths and, and things have been corrected. The back groove's been removed, and the back has been replaced with a solid three-quarter inch piece. Um, I, I know one user, uh, David Brescia, was actually using a uh, just a tall nailer, um, but this will actually be appropriately named. It is a full three-quarter inch piece, and it's a full planton type back uh, for this the, the shorter, this the little small seven eighths of a cabinet, um, so that the joint between the back of the, sh the ha half cabinet or seven eighths cabinet and the side of the full cabinet isn't just a, just a seam. There's no offset like there was when we had a quarter inch back in there. Um, so this cabinet's been refined some, but it's the same cabinet we've had for a while, just some additional uh, refinement done to it. Um, and, and all of the parts for these cabinets have been uh, appropriately named. When you actually cut them on a saw, they're going to be distinguished between a regular side panel. They're actually going to say that they're, you know, if you cut a, a, a base 45 corner or a pie cut cabinet or any special cabinet, an angled cabinet, a clip cabinet, any of those, they're going to actually be separated on the cut list or, 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 or in the cut list in the normal order, but the name of them is going to be specific to the cabinet type. Uh, even on the, the nested patterns, you'll see that at the bottom, that it actually is part of the part name. It won't just be a wall side left. It'll be a wall side left angle, wall side left clipped, wall side left pie, wall side left 45. Um, so that the, all that work has been done here very recently, and we'll, it is part of 9.02, um, the, the, the next release that will be coming out shortly. I uh, don't think I've added any new cabinets here. I think all of these have always been here, but I did add the farmer sink from the accessories group just so you're not having to go to the accessories group to get that if you're using it. Also added several uh, units up here at the top too. This door arched was over in the accessories group, moved it over to here so you can get to it. This door entry was over in the accessories and I moved that here so you could get to it and then there's several other groups that we'll see as we go here. Um, tall cabinets, we have a lot more cabinets added to this uh, group of, of uh, cabinets here as far as oven cabinets go. We've always had, and, and the names are different too, but tall micro over com, or, or tall micro oven combo, which is kind of like a double oven unit. There's no rail in between. Um, we have a tall double ovens. Um, we've always had, and then the tall micro over oven. And then we've added recently this tall oven or micro over door. So this is a single oven unit um, that's new. Um, all of that's working right now and I'm going to spend some time with these individual cabinets in another video. Um, and then we've added a single oven over two, two drawers, a single oven over three drawers, and a single oven over four drawers. Um, and then also just to touch on that since we're talking about oven cabinets, uh, one of the clients asked me to, to fix this cabinet. I haven't messed with anything in this group um, this grouping was specific to Mark Poole, um, how he liked to build oven cabinets, and I didn't even look at anything in it as I went to version 9, but this one cabinet someone said they were using, which is a full tall cabinet. You see doors over a single oven over two drawers, 
and I just went ahead and reworked that cabinet to get it working right with the True32 library. So that one unit has been refined some, but as you see here, we do have a lot more cabinets in here than we've had in the past. Um, also, we've got all of these, uh, you know, the, the, our pantries are named appropriately now, or they're actually the upper and lower, and we, you know, we've separated before this pantry upper and oven upper were uh, one single unit, and you had to adjust the height for the appropriate, now they're uh, for the appropriate application. Now these are specific to those new startup standards we saw. So this one will be the right, if you drop an oven cabinet, this cabinet will be the right height for that oven cabinet when you drop it. Same thing for the uh, lower unit for the pantry and oven, you've got one of each. Um, added all these refrigerators based off of the standards from most of the, uh, you, still, you still might find a, a built-in refrigerator that won't fit with these, but basically these sizes, if we take that cabinet there, um, it's the upper cabinet above a built-in refrigerator, and the, the width of this cabinet is actually 38 millimeters wider than the standards call for. Uh, each one of these units are 38 millimeters wider to allow us to put these built-in flat fillers. These fillers um, go on the cabinet or the tall panel next to it um, and, and give us something for the refrigerator to recess back now that we're pulling these applied ends 20 millimeters forward. Um, it's a very effective way to deal with built-in appliances. Um, you can always adjust, the, but the default width of that cabinet will be based off of what they're asking for plus 38 millimeters, and then when you add back these two fillers, um, it'll be back to what they were asking for in the specs. Um, let's see. Also, well, let's wait till we get there. Um, I have another appliance item that I added recently that I want to talk about, but um, I'll wait till I get the appliance group. In the vanity group, I really don't think there, there's a couple cabinets in here being tested and, and I'm just playing with them and they're, not, they're going to probably actually show up with cut listing properly in version 10 um, but they have a, a, a note on them that says they're just being tested but one is a false front five drawer which will actually become a false front combo um, instead of a five drawer will actually there'll be a false front in the middle and a drawer flanking the false front and the two drawers below and try to get the machining in there for the CNC guys where to machine uh, you know a certain size U that we can hopefully determine within the cab dialog box um, out of the drawer bottoms for Novas and Zargons, uh, Zargon drawers. And then also this is a cabinet that's been uh, asked for for years and just really no good effective way to do it yet. And anything that has a partition is tough for True32 um, CNC guys where we need to actually technically machine two sides of the partition. But this cabinet, uh, we actually would not have to machine the rights in that particular application where the drawers are on the left, we wouldn't have to machine the right side as long as we didn't expect to have shelving or pullouts in that right side. We, we could actually pull that off, so I'm going to work on that cabinet. Um, we do have the ADA sinks. They're all done and working in both the base group and in this vanity group where you have, uh, uh, and again, I'm going to go over those cabinets specifically in another video, but we actually have uh, end panels that are shaped appropriately for something that looks like that. And, and where that's not showing the end panels, the end panels would actually be shaped like that. Um, they're off the wall, the same distance of the false front height. And then we have a false or, or a base sink rail that allows you to attach a, a false front to it. And then there's a, the skirt that you see at the bottom would be a separate piece that would be screwed on traditionally, but it could use uh, KQ fittings or however you wanted to attach it. Uh, but you do have a cut list in manual and in the CNC world. Uh, with templates in the CNC world for this ADA cabinet now. Um, space, a little blind. I don't think there's anything else in here. And you can move that vessel sink over here out of the accessories group so you would have that available to you. And of course, in, these blind fillers, I didn't go over those in each one, but these blind fillers are now here. Um, and also flat fillers are in each of the groups um, as needed. Um, you, you see that. Uh, you know, tall filler flat and uh, here, and that's in addition to this flat filler for the refrigerator. There's a tall flat filler and a base flat filler and a wall flat filler, um, and then obviously we've added, as we talked about earlier, uh, flat freeze, and then the one that just just freeze is vertical freeze. And again, I'm going to go over that in a, in a later video. In the plant or in this desk bookcase group. This is what used to be called the entertainment group, and you see these entertainment units are still in here, um, where we have the True32 stacked units. Not as applicable as it used to be with all the flat screens, but on occasion it still becomes useful. 
Um, but you, you, this particular unit you're building up the center unit 50 or 100 millimeters total difference in width in the uh, uh, upper and lower units and there are some defaults in here although you can change them um, so this three unit stack allows you to use pocket doors in the center group and the pocket doors actually a, a hardware actually uh, is attached to the applied ends and pockets into those 50 millimeter gaps you see on either side here and here um, and then you have an adjustable shelf that allows you to for uh, VCRs or uh, any of the equipment that you need within the TV cavity. Um, but that's a pretty unique way of building a, uh, an entertainment center unit where all the doors look identical, but the center door is actually pocket. Um, also, we have um, let's see, the bookcases down here at the bottom. And this bookcase has face frames on it. Now, it's specific to True32, so we're going to build a traditional. 32 millimeter frameless cabinet and it's going to also give us face frame parts then we might order those face frames from somebody like Conestoga or Wellscraft um, or we can actually nest them on the router or cut them ourselves um, the parts will be on the cut list or on the nested pattern if you want them to be um, but these this bookcase actually has face frame parts um, this bookcase is traditional frameless cabinet parts but this bookcase is exactly the same it does you know, now at this point remove the edge banding indicators um, unless you don't add the molding to the front of the adjustable shells, the adjustable shells will still have the edge banding indicators if you do not say you are. And the defaults on these now do have the nailers and the, the nailer cap moldings and the front edge mold. All that's actually attached to the code of the cabinet now. So when you actually open this cabinet up and look at your options, you see that the internal bookcase nailers are already on as opposed to you having to turn them on. Um, and then also the upper face frame is on. Now that's an auto that was always been on, um, but also the upper nailers with no sus suspension blocks, um, to, you know, which turns off the suspension blocks and adds two additional nailers behind the back, and then the shelf edging. So all these things are automatically attached to the cabinet now for you, and then you could turn them off if you didn't want them. So if you turn this add shelf edgings off, the edge banding indicators will come back on, but if this is on, there's no point in edge banding those shelves. Um, so that's that's a fairly new uh, item to to the bookcases anyway, um, and then we've got applied ends, uh, a lot of new applied ends throughout all these groups. These are being specific to the bookcases, so that this is coming down to the countertop and it's whatever the height the bookcase units are set to. Um, and the same thing holds true for even uh, top cabinets. We now have additional applied ends that come down to the countertop. Um, we also have in the tall cabinet group. Um, new applied in ultimately this is the where all the, the this three vertical panel applied in here and then the one that goes to the floor these actually create cut lists for these in the past we've just basically had a, a part that we can order but if we wanted to make it we couldn't get a cut list um, it would either be just equally divided into six or three or four panels but you couldn't actually control it now with these you actually have control of the height of the panels as well um, so that when you set this up you can actually have the bottom unit shorter and the, or a real short center unit right now it's dividing them equally by default but you could set these and get a cut list appropriate for that so there's quite a few applied ends throughout the units um, there is within this uh, appliance group I've added again we had refrigerators in the tall cabinet group, refrigerator cabinets in the tall cabinet group specific to these built-in units and now we actually have uh, appliances specific to built-in refrigerators as, as in addition to the regular refrigerator um, but we also have within this dishwasher the ability now to whenever you place a dishwasher um, you can turn this on and off but there's a feature that adds uh, uh, two fillers and some people might use these permanently and some people might use them temporarily. I typically use them temporarily. Uh, whenever I drop a dishwasher, it automatically adds 208 millimeter fillers, whatever the width of the dishwasher is. And then it has a note on both the manual and CNC cut list to pocket hole those parts. Um, and that uh, allows you to have something to hold those cabinets in position until the countertops go on. And when I put those in, they, they, we pocket hole them in the shop, and then we just screw them to the cabinets on either side or the cabinet on one side, apply it in, or whatever the application is. Uh, forces that to stay into position until the countertops have been attached. Um, and then because we've pocketed it on, they, they, whoever uh, at some point in time can remove those. 
um, units, and I typically write on them with a sharpie. You know, do not remove until countertops are installed. Um, but you could turn it vertical, um, and several guys had uh, requested this. I believe Jay Miller was the first one to ask for it, but several people had mentioned that they'd like to have a, a part that they could add above the dishwasher. Um, where they're using granite countertops or court, you know uh, one of the quartz countertops, something like that, um, and they don't want to drill into the countertop and, and embed a, uh, a threaded uh, piece that they would just like to be able to have something to screw into. And most dishwashers nowadays give you enough height adjustment to be able to allow this additional 19 millimeters. So this one of these two parts could actually be used for that piece um, if you edge band it. So and it will have the edge band indicator on it. So anytime you drop a dishwasher, if you've got this feature turned on you get these two additional wooden parts on your cut list or on your nested patterns um, with the edge banding indicators on the CNC parts um, to be able to have something to either hold that space or something for the dishwasher to attach to. Um, the front load washer and dryer was in the accessories group, moved it to here. Uh, also added the either ice maker or trash compactor. Again, I don't remember which one was here, but one was and one wasn't, and I added that. And then we also have new standards to control it from the startup standards. Uh, plant, we also have a new dishwasher. This dishwasher uh, that is here in this group uh, now has a dishwasher and a dish drawer. And then and this one is inappropriate. There is no, to my knowledge, there's no dish drawer with a control panel, but I left it because it probably will be one day. Um, but dishwasher, dish drawer, and then dishwasher, no control panel. We've needed that a long time. You know, just a ton of the dishwashers now have the control panel on the top of the door. Um, so it's a, it's a little nicer looking unit than what was the old icon um, that we had. And then this dishwasher, dish drawer with no control panel. So that's, those are new. Looking for the same thing in this appliance with panels. Right now we don't have that. We still have the old dishwasher with the control panel at the top. And you can't do any, you can get rid of that panel at the bottom, but you can't re get rid of the control panel at the top and I assume that's in the works uh, with KCD. Um, Wood Hoods is a, I believe a new group, um, but we also have now some, some features that allow us, in this case, this is a bunch of cabinet components um, that I used, basically wainscot panels and balances and corbels and things like that, and I created a unit, um, and, and you see I've created one in here, a little different unit, but you, with the right button features now, you can right click on a, a bunch of pieces and parts that you've used to create something like this um, and once they're all red numbers then you can uh, right click over here in this grouping and save as a custom unit to that grouping and name it appropriately and reuse it in another job and that's an awesome feature uh, of version 9 um, and also uh, we'll be adding more units to this ourselves too um, but once these units are in here you can double click on them. This is the W series Stanisi wood hood um, and it's currently at 1868 in width and you can just add it based on the same criteria that we do to add a cabinet to a job and um, it's going to reutilize something you drew in another job. I mean, this, this could be anything really. I mean you could add to any of these groups, maybe to the miscellaneous group, just a cabinet that you've spent a lot of time on um, and you want to be able to use it in another job. Just throw it into that miscellaneous group and, and then open the other job up and, and pull it out of that miscellaneous group. So, but we've, I've gone through here and created, you know, these cabinets, the default heights and widths and depths are based off of Stenisi's, uh, some of Stenisi's different hoods. Um, so we've got these, you know, 30, 36, 42, and 48 inch traditional style hoods. And then um, th this hood has been in here a long time, um, didn't do anything to that one. But these are, these last three are some new ones that KCD has added. Ultimately, I'm hoping that we'll actually be able to have Stenisi's hoods within these, but if not, we can uh, duplicate as many of them as we can here and slide them into there. Uh, created a group for corbels, specific to corbels, so they're not in countertops anymore. It'll hard to find in countertops. Um, clips is not new. Turnings is not new. Turnings 2 is not new. Uh, these become less relevant now that we actually have libraries for Osborne, Adams Wood Products, and White River. Um, those are all new. KCD added those, so um, it makes more sense to pull those from there rather than have this turning group. This probably in some future uh, version will go away altogether. Um, legs, feet, and baseboard is a new group, but all the things in the group have come from some other group. Um, just trying to kind of consolidate some of the groupings and get things that, that make sense to be together together. So these are all dealing with something to happen beneath the cabinet. Um, whether it be a leg or foot or a baseboard. Um, fluted units is nothing new. Beadboard units is nothing new. 
the soffits is nothing new. Countertops has some new units in it. Um, I believe this inside radius unit is new, and maybe this radius, uh, maybe it's clipped. One of these two, there was one but not the other. Um, I, I believe that it was radius and not clipped, or vice versa, but one of those is new. Um, the 45 corner cabinet is, or countertop is new, um, and this full radius countertop is new, and then the, these other items have always been here. Miscellaneous group is basically just a couple pieces they've added there for us, and then you can um, add anything you want specific to you. And when you add items to this, unit, this grouping, they go into a custom folder, and so now that I know that, I can not overwrite that folder. So anything you add when we update the True32 library, you won't use lose items that you've added to this um, menu now that you can do that with this right button functionality. So that is all the new startup standards. I'm sorry this one was so long, but I uh, really needed to go over a bunch of things in it. So that's all the new startup standards. And going over all these groups, in future videos, we'll talk about some of the specifics of the cabinet types and, and things like that. So I hope that was helpful to someone and uh, look forward to seeing you on another video.